Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, you, Kenyatta, calling heads of state and government, Chairperson of the African U Union Commission, Secretary General of CARICOM, distinguished guests. While we are separated across land and sea, we have so much in common, including a rich culture and diversity, and our people as a fundamental asset for progress and achievement. I announced on August 1st, 2021, in my inaugural annual Anti Emancipation Day address, four days after assuming office, that my administration plans to take Caribbean's real African history to schools and to make Emancipation Day already a holiday, a major annual event on a national calendar. As I said then, we strongly believe that while slavery was abolished over a century ago, the mindset and racial attitudes that brought African people to the Caribbean and the Americas still linger. I assure that this historic first gathering of African Caribbean leaders, that under my watch, St. Lucians will have good reason to remember the struggles of our forefathers while preserving and protecting the heritage they left us. And today is only the beginning, over 143 years later, but it's never too late to start. My administration also welcomes this ready platform for communication, cooperation, coordination between Africa and the Caribbean to share COVID-19 experiences and develop mechanisms to help reduce our common dependence on an on equal vaccine distribution. This is a stark living reminder of the inequalities of the system. Having to import 10 times more pharmaceuticals than we produce in the Caribbean, and our regional vaccination levels at only between 15 and 23 percent. We also support the recent initiative announced by, by PAO to create a platform to increase regional vaccine manufacturing production. Unfortunately, we also share particularly vulnerability to the ravages of climate change. This means that inevitably we are all invested in securing sustained global action to arrest and reverse this scourge. In this regard, Close cooperation between small and developing states, African countries and other developing states was instrumental in securing the 2015 Paris Agreement and the 1.5 target for global temperature increase. In light of the climate emergency, the pursuit of a green recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic and the critical decisions to be made at the 26th Conference of Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, COP26, is essential that the flame of col collaboration kindled in Paris be fanned vigorously in Glasgow in November of this year, in order to ensure that the instrumental com that the international community and in particular industrialized nations manifest a level of climate ambition that will secure the safety of the planet and the survival of our countries. Our country must always con must also continue to work under the banner of non-annex one developing countries in the negotiating group of 77 and China. Thus far, we have collaborated and strengthened our voices, having common positions on such fundamental issues as finance, finance and adaptation, loss and damage. In the area of finance, it is imperative that we speak with one voice under the operating entities or the financial mechanism. The vision simply retards progress for both our regions, something we can ill afford in a process where we can only move forward with consensus. Our regions must also maximize the possibilities for collaboration outside of international arrangements, exploring areas such as technology, capacity building, research exchanges, and formal education op op opportunities. There is so much that we can learn from each other. Already within the climate change context, the African Union's Agenda 2063 is consonant with CARICOM's agenda as you prioritize environmentally sustainable and climate resilient economies and communities. We are aware that you, you have committed to act with a sense of urgency on climate change and the environment. The focus on climate technology, women and youth, sustainable forest management and climate resilient agriculture, among others. As we forge ahead, the Caribbean community looks forward to deeper and more meaningful connections with the continent of Africa, working together in achieving the developmental aspirations of our nations and our people. I thank you, Mr. President.